this is my third time filming this video and this is going to be my last I don't care how it comes out so before you say like clickbait or anything I promise you I'm telling the truth the title is correct I have dropped out of Howard University <laughs> Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your Anna Cache. I'm 19 years old, a content creator and college student. And in today's video, I'm going to be letting you guys know my experience at Howard University and why I dropped out. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. <laughs> so I first toured Howard University um, a couple summers back. I was still in high school. If you, I'm pretty sure the video is on here. It's like the second or third video on my channel. Um, and to be quite honest, upon first impression, I wasn't impressed. I was like kind of impressed, but not really because at that time we had went to a bunch of different HBCUs and I was able to kind of compare and contrast Howard to other HBCUs and they weren't very hospitable if I'm being quite honest. Like going to the campus, we could barely get let in to use the bathroom. The entire time we toured, it was outside on a hot, when, I mean a hot summer day. Um, they didn't like, they weren't, they didn't give us any like, you know, little things to remember them by. We didn't try anything. It was nothing like that. Um, other schools, you get cups, you get pamphlets, you sit down for lunch. We didn't, no, we didn't even go in. Um, and they pretty much just told us mostly about celebrities and who they invite to the school and all the parties they have, which was, it was cool or whatever, but it's not the most important thing. Like, let me know about curriculum, class size, all this other stuff, you know, they really, give us that kind of information which kind of yeah I noted it in the back of my mind but I was like okay let me also do my own outside research to really make a firm decision on this um and I ended up watching YouTube videos like this like people's experience why they left and all this other stuff to kind of draw my own conclusions and decide whether or not I want to go here now prior to even touring any HBCUs I never really thought about it I was more set on like Ooh, I want to go to the Ivy League or something. I really wanted to go to like a school in New York City for some reason because it's New York City. But yeah, I didn't really ever think about HBCUs. I wasn't well informed until that tour and I learned more about them. And I was like, wow, this is cool. Like, I think this is where I belong. So I ended up applying to 12 schools, one of them being Howard. I got accepted. Um, and basically it came down to location. I wanted something that wasn't too local for me because I wanted to experience the world and other things like that like all kids do um it also came down to entertainment and like extracurriculars I wanted a place where I could have fun when I'm not focusing on my academics I wanted a place with a curriculum um and I wanted affordability of course because personally I don't know about y'all but I don't want to be in debt for the rest of my life and Howard had set me up really nicely when it came to financial aid um with like one of their merit scholarships. I don't remember, I think mine's is like leadership or something. That's the scholarship, right? It's like several levels and tiers of merit scholarships that you can get when you first apply, but I think that's the one that I had. And you know, after scholarship was applied and other financial aid that I have, um, I would have been coming out of pocket about like thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars a year, which is like, yeah, it's still expensive, but it was more doable than paying like compared to like $40,000 a year at another institution that I applied to. So that pretty much, that ultimately helped me come to the conclusion that, yeah, I'm going to go to Howard University. Boom. Sign in day, did Howard University, told everybody I'm going to Howard, whatever. Fast forward to senior year and everything just shuts down because obviously Miss Rona, you know. And then we came to the, conclusion, the realization that we would be um, online for school, learning remotely. So the way that worked for me, it was not the easiest or smoothest transition. Um, but at that point, I had already finished out my senior year online. So I got a little experience using Blackboard more often and like Zooms and all the other stuff. So it wasn't really surprising to, you know, go over to college and do the same thing or whatever. They tried to make it as smooth as possible. It was, it was decent. Only things I will say was that... Um, as much as we pay for internet and technology services, like we have a little technology fee within like the cost of the institution, their internet and stuff was not that that good. We've gotten hacked before. Uh, lots of times they'll go out because of the weather or whatever else. 
which is crazy. You're like a private institution with all this money. Where's the IT team? Where is it? Where are they? Because there's no way we should be missing a whole week of classes because we've gotten hacked or something. So there was that. So being a remote and having to deal with all those technological issues was kind of annoying. Um, as well as, what else? Financial aid. Financial aid is in a league of its own. Um, I've been on hold financial aid for about three hours before. Um, emailing them, you have to wait about one to three weeks to get a response back. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and usually financial aid is distributed always a little delayed or late or whatever. It's annoying, but you know, I feel like that's a common issue amongst HBCUs and we need to fix it. Like, we need to fix it. And there will be a lot of times where you have to come correct, you know, you have to you know, goes to them because they've made an error on your account. It's just a lot of a lot of mess with that. I don't even want to get too deep into that, but just know you're gonna have issues with financial aid if you go there. Another thing is, as far as professors go, I feel like everybody's pretty decent, pretty chill, whatever. Um, it is a lot of work. I'm not gonna say here in cap to you. It's a private institution. It's the HBCU. They expect you to be the best. I've gotten two 12 page papers due in the same week. I've had, you know, present group presentations, sing, individual presentations, whatever. It's a lot of work at the end of the day. But I was pretty much used to it because we used to get work like that in high school. I don't know what y'all high school, my high school used to push us to death. And I was a creative writing major at that. So I was, you know, I'm kind of used to it at this point. So I was nothing like that I couldn't manage. Yes, it is a bit more difficult to manage if you have a job or you do other outside activities, volunteer work or whatever. Take that into consideration that you won't have as much free time as you probably desire. But I was still able to, you know, get balanced it out a little bit. I had a job or two, um, did schoolwork and volunteered here or there. Still had time to go to the gym here and there, grocery shop, whatever I need to do, got done pretty much. So. You just gotta learn to be able to juggle a couple things at once, you know, and that's pretty much, I think, one of the aspects of most colleges is how to balance that work to school life ratio, whatever. What else? As, for, as far as professors themselves go, again, they were pretty chill. I don't really have too many issues with them. Um, there were a few instances of uh, language barriers. A lot of the professors have accents, or they come from different countries. Um, and sometimes you have to ask them to repeat themselves, it's no issue, it's no problem. But for the most part, a lot of them aren't that hard to understand. But there was certain instances, for example, where a whole class almost got expelled over some cheating scandal. They are really serious and kind of firm a lot of the times. As well as, what other instances? I had an instance with a math teacher that was like, no one understood what was going on in the class at all times. The homework was just like randomly assigned. There wasn't really strict deadlines. It was just kind of all over the place and really unorganized. And some teachers are like that. Or you might get the monotonous teacher that's like super boring. It's like a three hour lecture. But you know, it's it's college. You don't you never know what you're gonna get when it, you know, for the most part, I like my professors. They're pretty cool. Definitely the type of people who will help you in the future with internships or write rec letters or recommendations for other things. Pretty cool people. As far as curriculum goes, it was top tier curriculum. I learned a lot. And that's pretty much all I can say about on that. What I can say, another thing I will point out is academic advisors slash counselors. Um, I'm not going to put this on them because I think the amount of students that each academic advisor has to be accountable for is the reason why this is such a big issue but I contacted academic advisors before and I it's taken weeks the most it's ever taken is about a month or two to get a response because they have so many students to worry about and so many issues to help out with it's ridiculous they definitely need help <laughs> they need more academic advisors or more way more solutions to solve students problems that don't require academic advisors help i don't know but it was kind of ridiculous i do commend my academic advisor for reaching out via telephone email like she really tried her best to help me out um but she did what she could and you know that's not her fault besides that i was pretty much remote the entire time because the school was you know, either you had to be vaccinated or if you weren't vaccinated, you, I guess you can stay up going to classes if you get tested bi-weekly or weekly and you live off campus. But yeah, I was promoted the entire time. Besides the problems I pointed out, there wasn't that many issues. You know, you just, you kind of get the Zoom fatigue, going to class all the time. 
Um, especially me taking, I think last semester I did 17 credits and the semester before that I did like 15. As a merit-based scholarship student or whatever, you did have to maintain 15 credits, which is something I should have read in my, contra in my contract that I didn't, which kind of played into role of why I left. And we're just gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna get into that in a second. As far as everything else goes, like my experience, I'll give it like a six out of ten or so. I do think they have so much work to do and so much things they can improve to really be that institution that they used to be or that people associate it with when they think of Howard, like the prestigious Howard University, the Howard University, the Mecca or whatever. They have a lot of work to go. They have a long way to go. But it wasn't entirely terrible until getting closer to the end of me leaving. So let's get into that. So basically, um, in my contract, which I didn't know, I don't even have a copy of my contract. I don't, I don't know why. I felt like I saved it before, but I, I couldn't access it. I don't know. All I know is Basically, when you're on scholarship, merit-based scholarship, whatever, you have to main 15 credit hours. And that wasn't really an issue for me originally because, you know, I wanted to finish college early if I could or just get it over with. So I was doing 15, 17, 18 credits a semester because I wanted to be up and out of there. Um, but it wasn't an issue until recently when, you know, they keep changing and fluctuating with are we going to be in person are we going to be online it's going to be hybrid so initially everybody was remote right and then they started to gradually put students back on campus but everything was still like hybrid mostly online you can stay in you can stay on campus but your most most of your classes are going to be online um and it was a last minute decision this spring semester that we're pretty much almost going to go 90% in person. They just sent us a random email. So set up your housing, all this other stuff. And one, I'm not vaccinated. We're not going to get into that because I don't want to start a whole political debate about vaccinations, all this other stuff. But I'm not vaccinated. And it was just really last minute. And I would have to kind of, one, pull together funds to find an off-campus living space because I can't stay on campus being unvaccinated. Or even if I did stay on campus, I still have to pull together funds to stay on campus. It was just really, really last minute the way they set it up, as well as a lot of other schools like Ivy Leagues and stuff were saying how they were shutting down. They weren't opening this semester, even though they opened last semester because of, you know, the pandemic, you know, the cases are rising. So I was unsure what was happening at all. And um, at the time when a registration occurred, I tried to get into a bunch of classes. A lot of them were either located on campus or they um, weren't even offering the class anymore. It's just a lot of issues with registration. And next thing you know, it's time to, you know, go back to school. So I'm contacting academic advisors. Mind you, I was doing this before, though. I was doing this back in December, early December, contacting academic advisors. Please help me. I don't know what to do. Basically, I'm going to lose my scholarship. I'm going to have to leave the institution if I can't figure this out. And I just feel like it wasn't, I don't think it wasn't taken as seriously as it could have been or maybe they were just really that booked and busy that they didn't have as much time to worry about my situation because I, they had multiple students in the same situation. So yeah, fa fast forward to recently, they said registration ends on the 21st or something and I only had like three, three classes registered and then one of the classes was like, oh, we're going to be in person now. So I had to take that class off. I tried to get into every single class that was on my little schedule for graduation thing, whatever. I tried to get into anything I could. Nothing. And filled maximum capacity, which is another issue they have with like too many students coming in and not enough spaces in classrooms. It was either online or just they didn't offer course anymore. It was just really, really frustrating and really difficult. And I'm praying at this point, I'm like, God, please, because I really want to stay at this school, whatever. Basically, I, I saw the financial aid bill or whatever, and if I lose the scholarship, there is no getting the scholarship back. I don't know why. I even asked to take a hiatus or a break or whatever. Would they still hold it? No, if you leave, you're done. You're not getting your scholarship back. And so I was like, well, I'm not about to go into debt for no reason because I can't even take the full amount of course I need to take to be a full-time student. And no one's helping me. It was just a lot and at some point I just stopped caring. I was like, you know what, if that's how it is, that's how it is. 
pretty much at an institution you're just another number you're just another student another statistic whatever to make the school look good to get your degree at the end of the day everybody's here just to play their own roles and so I had to realize that and it kind of hurt because I'm like dang like you know I thought we had something here like I'm really doing my best you would think like I was really studying hard GPA is really good that you know the student is really they want to stay here they are doing the best they can like let's accommodate them in some way we can no one tried to help me at all at all um and I was informed last minute after I already turned in my withdrawal application that oh we're going to extend the registration to um a whole nother week I could have had another week to try however I highly doubt I would have gotten into any course anyways but you know that would have been nice to know before I, before I turned in my withdrawal form basically what I'm saying is I left because I was unable to fulfill the credit hours requirement for my scholarship. Um, and I was unable to basically get into any class like that. It would have been pointless for me to go to the semester just to take two or three classes. Because I would only be like a part-time student. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't even apply for like all my financial aid because I'm a part-time student. So it just wasn't worth it at this point. And I would have lost my scholarship and had to start paying out of pocket completely for school. And it became so frustrating to the point that I just had to leave and it just was inconvenient for me yes this did put a kink in my plans i've missed out i'm pretty this is supposed to be my spring semester right now pretty much missing out on a whole 15 credits worth of classes um that i could be obtaining to get my degree getting close to my degree um now i have to transfer to a different university and you know i never really made friends at Howard like that a lot of people were just kind of fake i'm gonna be real they were just not it for me they weren't my cup of tea. Um, and not just that, it's just hard to make friends online. And a lot of times, we're all trying to get this degree. Yes, a lot of us are smart getting into Howard, you know. Gotta have a certain GPA to get in and all this other stuff. But even then, you will get used. If you are smart, if you have certain assets or abilities, you will get used, I promise you. And that's at any institution, though. But, yeah, it, it was super annoying to go through that. Howard does have a lot of work to do. 6 out of 10. Make your own choices based on this video. Like, I'm not telling you to not go to Howard because of my experience. You can look at the news. You can look at YouTube, whatever, to draw your own conclusions and create this perception of Howard and decide whether or not you want to go to it or not. But basically, yeah, that was my experience. That is why I dropped out. And I hope this video wasn't all over the place because I feel like it was. My brain is so scatterbrained right now. And I will be going to different institutions. This isn't the end of my educational story. So I'll let you guys know all about that in a future video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. Like I feel I was so nervous about making this video because I felt like I would get criticism about leaving such a prestigious university or whatever but a lot of people don't know what go on what goes on behind the scenes at Howard because I don't know what that was because it's a lot of mess it is every institution has their secrets they have their you know dirt or whatever but at the end of the day it's up to you whether or not you want to go if it's in your price range if it's what you like whatever if it's offering what you want yeah so that's pretty much the video I I am going to have a time editing this video because I just uh but I'm not filming it again. I told you guys it's the third time I filmed this video. I'm not doing it again. Um I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Stay tuned for more content. Yes, I might not be in college, but we're still gonna have a good time. I'm focused on my channel right now, making this money, traveling. I do have a trip coming up soon. I'll let you guys know all about that. So I will see you guys next time. Love you guys so much. Thank you guys for tuning in and supporting my channel. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.